Hello, hello? Okay. <coughs> hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is I once again, Alex. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, I know I have been posting a lot, and that's because I've actually had a lot of stuff come up commission-wise, and I don't like to film commissions when I'm working on them. What I film are A, experiments, or B, ideas that I've come up with. So I apologize for that, but this isn't a commission, so I'm more than happy to do it. So basically, medieval weaponry, right? We had all kinds of stuff. We had your sword. Well, okay, so you had your scimitar, you had your broadsword, you had your dagger, you had spears, you had axes, you had all kinds of stuff. But there's something that I haven't really made before. Well, I made it now, but I haven't made this like in as much detail as I'm going to go into. And that's a mace. Now, to the best of my knowledge, maces come in two forms. You got your flange, which is the type of mace that has like all the, like, the little sheet bits that go around to make a little circle. And then you have your regular mace, the one that's just like a solid weight at the end, right? So, what I have today is... I have this. Um, this is actually just some aluminum tubing that's left over from when I, re from when I did my closet. It's the bar that goes across to hang clothing on. I have these two dowel rods. I just bought them yesterday. A styrofoam ball. Um, this isn't the regular styrofoam like you typically get. Um, you know, the ones that's like all... I don't know how to describe it. It kind of has like a rough-ish texture to it. You go like this and a whole bunch of it falls off. Uh, this styrofoam is a lot more solid. Like, I'm a, I actually just put a lot of pressure into that. Like, enough to crack an egg normally. And as you can see, not even a small indent. And I have some scrap pieces of PVC. Give me one second. There, see? A single scrap piece of PVC. Relatively thick. That's everything that I'm going to be using. I'll give me one second to move some stuff out of the way. So, that's it material-wise. Everything past this... Either get the right tools or use what you have available to you. Me personally, I have the right tools available. So, first things first. Give me a sec. There we go. Yes. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what this is called. Let me just make sure you're still recording. Yeah, okay. I don't exactly know what this is called. I think it's called a spade bit. Um, all I know is it makes pretty good. Um, all I know is it makes pretty good holes. Just put that into my rigid drill. So the first part to prepare the styrofoam ball is, if it has any labels on it, take that off. That will be very important when you actually go for the painting part of it. Secondly, you'll notice this small ridge right there. What I'm going to do for that is... As always, unprofessionalism has come to bite me in the ass. There it is. Take just any knife. Um, I have a actual box cutter that I like to use for styrofoam cutting and such. And just go around the edge slightly. Now you don't need to do a lot. In fact, I actually recommend doing as little as you can. But just getting that one area smooth will give you a nicer finished product. Okay, I'm taking care of most of it. When I paint it, it'll 
kind of blend in now, so it's a little nicer at least. So mine actually has a small hole here at the bottom. It came like that. Yours might not. So what you're going to do is take your bit and you want to try and get it to go in as straight as you can. I'm not going to be able to do that on camera because of the way I have everything positioned, so give me a few seconds. It is almost most certainly not going to be a clean hole. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it suits the purposes for what I need. Now, the next thing you're going to do is just take your metal rod. Ah, there we go. Oh dear, I didn't go in straight, it would seem. Come on. That's straight-ish, I guess. Again, this isn't my, this isn't one that I would be selling. This is going to be for my own personal use. One that I would sell, I would not accept anything this lopsided. In fact, let me just see if I can... Whatever. Okay, I managed to fix it a little bit. So, this is just so you have the right, so you have about how deep it's going to be going in. Take any sharpie. I like to use a white. I like to use a red one. And mark just one spot. So that right there tells me how deep it goes into the ball. I think I can go just a little bit deeper. Okay, clean it out as best you can. Oh yeah, that's a lot nicer. All right, second marking. So I'm gonna go with that. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so this is it. This is as much room as I need right here. So next what I'm gonna do Take any grid of sandpaper, but the rougher the better. Put it on your pipe and just start moving it back and forth, up and down. You want it to be as rough as possible. A rougher surface is going to help a lot with this next step. Yeah, that works out perfectly. Okay. choices are threefold. Number one, you get Gorilla Glue. Not Gorilla Super Glue, but actual Gorilla Glue, the stuff that expands. Number two, what did I do with it? Ah, there it is. Number two, you can try expanding foam. Or number three, you can try just regular glue, but I don't recommend that. You see, the expanding stuff is good because on the inside, there's all these little nooks and cracks and areas that it's going to try and fill in. And then on top of that, because you've roughed up this surface, it'll also try and get into all of those little spots right there, giving you a nice tight grip. Me personally, I prefer Gorilla Glue, so that's what I'm going to end up using this time. Unfortunately, though, my Gorilla Glue is kind of messed up because I haven't used it right so often so I actually gotta take off the entire lid okay 
Uh, screwdriver. Screwdriver would be nice. Now, if you do get Gorilla Glue onto your tools, like I'm getting it right now, just make sure the area that's glued doesn't touch anything and you'll be fine. Because it's actually pretty easy to clean off once you get it where you want it to go. God damn it. So then, get a nice big glob on there. Put your lid back on really quick. Now then, once your big glob's on, put it right there and twist it as you move it in and out. And that's right, you do want to move it out a few times just so that you can try and get some more into the hole. You want to get as much as you can in. This does two things, depending on how tight you made your hole. Number one, it lubricates it so that it goes in nice and easy. Yes, I know, insert random sex pun here. And number two, it spreads the glue all over the inside, like that. See? I'm going to try and coat as much as you can on the inside with this. What that will do is it will allow it to expand into every last spot, give you a nice strong connection. Now, once that part's done, let it harden overnight. I mean, yeah, the I mean, yeah, the bottle says it completely cures in a certain amount of time, but I say just let it sit overnight. Better safe than sorry. So I'll be back once that's taken care of.